and they did it and to get up right there at the end and block an extra point when the game could have the minute 38 and the tie to do that. I mean, that, that's a lot of character. Our defense, Charles Kelly and, and the defense, I thought was outstanding today. Uh, they did some really nice things on it, the, and they got put in a bad situation with a punt return right there. We got they, they did a good job on that. We got to get that fixed. Um, we had a chance to score down there early in the game and threw a pick. Uh, uh, and they got momentum and got that's the one drive they got. But our kids battled, and we got to score before half and got it back to a two-score game. Got ten points, and then I uh, got the critical interception in the end zone. That was a big play right there for our guys to get that. And then we go down and get a touchdown, and then uh, get back in the game and get the lead. And then we have a chance to put it away. And hang, they hang in there, and you knew it. You, you could just see. I could just sense the game. I said they're either going to score. We're going to have to go in two minutes. Going to be going to be a goal line stand or something. I could just feel how the game was going. And uh, but that's Miami, Florida State. They got a great team. Mark's done a great job with those guys. They played hard. Uh, uh, but, you know, just extremely proud of our kids. I mean, we had so many guys. We got some guys that are banged and bruised, and that's when you come out of this game, it's a physical, physical football game. It always is. It's as physical as any you ever play. And uh, we're going to have to get ready and get healed up and get ready because we've got a really good Wake Forest team coming in next week. I think who's 5-2 and two or 5-1 and one or something like that. I mean, they've got a really good team. So we're going to have to get ready to go but, and get off of this. But, you know, just proud of our kids. That was a heck of a win to come down here and win here, and that was a great atmosphere and environment. Though. That's what college football is about. I mean, that was a great crowd. Their crowd was awesome and uh, everything about it, and the national, national game, and just proud of our kids. Questions? You always had DeAndre really bounce back after taking that injury in the third quarter against 10 of 11, 144, two touchdowns. How pleased were you with his turnaround in the second half? Very. Did his job. And I'm going to tell you something, and I, and I mean this wholeheartedly. Quarterback's not tough, team's not tough. Quarterback's tough, your team's tough. You got to have a leader that's willing to stand in there and take bullets. And both of them, Sean took some shots, and he went in there and did a nice job on some things, let us down almost to a drive. But, you know, he, he, he stood in there and took the bullets, man. And, and then you got to do it at this level. And he's going to be banged. He's going to be sore. we gotta, we got to evaluate and see how he is and, and see what goes on. But, man, that was, a, that was a tremendous effort and a lot of courage for him to stand in there. But, and I don't mean that. that that's, that's, that's what a quarterback does. Now those guys will respect him and like they have been. They'll play for him, and they always do. And, and when a guy does that, they're going to play hard for you. What do you think was different for him in that second half? Excuse me? What do you think was different for him in the second half in terms of – him moving the ball and just kind of being able to. Well, we moved, he moved it the first quarter a little bit until he got hurt. We just stalled on some. I mean, we had a, the fourth down play. If we can just get it over the guy, Dalvin's going to score. You know what I mean? You know, they, but that's big game. They made some plays. I think it's just poisoned it. And I think he's a competitor. I mean, you just, he grinded it out. And there's times, man, you don't, I keep telling you that. Everybody says it's something magical for me. Huh? When you're a competitor, you make, I'm going to get this done. You stand in there and you take the shots, you make the throws, you make the plays. And that competitive nature, you, there ain't a reason, just who you are. It's your DNA. And that's what his DNA is. You guys have lost obviously a couple of tough games this year, but what does the performance tonight show you that can lead to more wins here down the road? They're bonding together. They're feeling the pride. They're the competition level. Keep getting up. And again, it goes back to what we built the program on, toughness, effort, discipline, and pride. And I talk about that all the time. And that's all we talk about. Keep getting up. Because I, I can't mean the scoreboard's going when you do those intangibles, the scoreboard takes care of itself. That's the process that we talk about all the time. And there's a lot we got to clean up. But the heart and soul of the culture of the team, that's what start. They're finally starting to get it and how hard it is. And, and tonight, I hope they can feel that because I hope they, they want to remember that feeling again. They got to do it again. Jim, what kind of play for DeMar? Just he went into the season, you know, you know, wanting to finish his senior year off on a great note. The two losses obviously affected him, but for him to make this play at the end. He isn't a great note. I mean, great notes, I, again, championships are goals. That's not why you play the game. You play the game to get better. You play the game to be part of a team, and he's getting better. And I, I mean, if there's something better than what he got tonight, we don't know how this season plays out. Let's just go play football and play Wake Forest next week. I mean, we, everybody's so outcome-oriented. We're not outcome-oriented. I never have, never will be. And uh, he's getting everything out of his senior year that he wants out of it. He's, he's making it a heck of a year. What does it mean to this program to beat Miami seven years in a row? You know, it's almost, I mean, I don't comprehend it. I guess, I guess it's something special because I know how many times Florida State was on the other end of those games for so many years. And But, you know, they're a great team. And it's just a great rivalry and I have great respect for them and, and, uh, and to be able to do that. and very proud of our kids and our organization. One thing you really stressed this week was physicality in the offensive line. Do you like your improvement there, especially from half one to half two? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes we did offense, defense line. I mean, we still got to continue to be physical in that because that's the name of the game. That's how we're going to move the ball and start to play actions and all the things we do. But we're, we're making progress. Dalvin Cook, 209 total yards on that touchdown um, from DeAndre Francois. What do you have to say about his effort tonight? Dalvin Cook. <laughs> I say it every week. I mean, that's just who he is. What do you have rushing? 100 and 150? Wow. 
I mean, 27 carry, he's a warrior now. I mean, he is. He, he can do it. He can catch it. He's he's one of the special players in this country, and uh, I'm glad he's on our team. I know that. Do you think it's been about Dalvin, especially playing Miami, where he's just had these sort of, in, in, in a lot of ways, these backbreaking games that have just really put Miami behind the eight ball and has led you to victory? It's who he is. Again, it's in his DNA. Dan, he's a, he's got a he's different. I mean, he's got a look in his eye. He could he has a switch inside him that can he can rise to occasions and do, and do things, and he does it. And you know, this is one he loves to play, and he wants to do good down here. And I mean, it's just who he is. It's in his DNA. I mean, the fact that he's now added, like I guess the, the reception aspect to his game. I mean, how much more dangerous does that make him? Well, and it makes us as a team because he can create big plays. But then all of a sudden, you got to go play him and let somebody else not get double coverage, and they 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 you know make a play here or there. I mean, you know, it's just him continuing to grow and his respect for the game and not being content on who he is. I mean, he could say, hey, I can run it, I'm content. But he wants to continue to get better. And I think it sends a great message to our other players who say, you know, this guy's as good as anybody in America, but he just keeps getting better. Why can't I take that same attitude? Jimbo, how badly do you feel like your defense needed a performance like tonight? I think they did big time. I mean, I think that Charles Kelly and those guys, again, I've said it all along. They're in the right plays. The guys want to do well. They just got to relax and learn to play well and, and have the confidence to do it. And, and they'll get confidence as they continue to grow. And we're not perfect. we still got a lot of things to work on. we just got to go work and keep getting better at what we're doing. And I was extremely proud of our defense. I mean, the big stops and the things they did today, I mean, they, they played their tails off. How big was that score right before halftime? Really big. Got momentum, got confidence. Because even you felt you blew some opportunities moving the ball and you sit and you say, man, we're still two plays away. It's 13 to 3. You got the ball. You know what I mean? You're still two plays away. And uh, it was it was critical. It really was. It give us the confidence to finish the drive. That's by far the best your run defense has been this season. It looks mm -hmm. like, especially up the middle. <clears throat> what what do you attribute that to? Just practicing with better habits. Yeah. They're playing better. We're, we're doing, trying to do exactly what we're coached. Straining. <laughs> gut. I mean, I mean, I got to tell you, when you get down, like when you max out in the weight room or something, man, your eyeballs are sore, your guts are sore. That's the way you got to play every play. You got to learn to lay it on the line. And, and inside, you're not, that, there ain't no easy way to play football. Whenever somebody comes up with an easy way, please tell me. Okay? It's hard, it's tough, it's nasty. That's why special people play it. And you, we had to learn to do it, and we're still learning to do it. But our guys inside strained and plugged those gaps and took on blockers and did a much better job. Coach, you always stress the importance of the last drive of the first half and the first drive of the second. After the offense kind of sputters at the beginning of the second half, how big was it to get that turnover? And it was critical because we gave them one, they gave us one. We each, we each turned it over and the red zone was big, and then we took it right back and scored. And then we got a momentum again and started scoring and moving the football very consistently. It was uh, it was huge. Again, our defense, again, not worrying about anything else, just playing. And playing as a team. That's what they're doing, playing as a team.